All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're about to get into game number two here between St. Clair College and Stony Brook University. Here in the dream heck beyond Collegiate Invitational. After seeing game one, Stony Brook needs to really get back to the drawing board and get back to it quickly because holy smokes, whatever they tried to do just straight up did not work. In fact, they're going to get rid of Diana right away. That's going to be their main band change. Saint's going to keep the exact same lineup as last time, but they're actually going to steal over the Lulu. Going to take that one away from Fresh. Of course, that bot lane was probably the closest thing to an even lane for the most part in that, uh, in that last series. Maybe not necessarily, because uh, maybe even in regards to CS, but eliminations-wise, definitely saw the Saints kind of run away with it a little bit, as we are going to see Karma getting picked up alongside the Kindred. We seen E-Hug last time by on that Kindred in Game 1, and he ended up with like 13 kills or something like that. And that was absolutely disgusting. So, seeing that picked up alongside the Karma, possibly getting picked up by Fresh. We'll have to see. Try and maybe match poke for poke, shield with shield, so to speak. He's saying gonna get picked up here from Stony Brook. That could basically go anywhere, so it doesn't necessarily say anything as of right now. See you at mid, see you at top, see you at jungle. It's basically all over the place, so we'll have to see. And they're going to pick up the virus, so they're going to steal the Saints bot lane from last time by. Callista was just not necessarily working there for him. We did see him a very small pop-off near the very end there for the Stony Brook AD carry, but unfortunately too little, too late. Saints now one more pick before we get ourselves into this. The next band phase, Ash being covered. Not necessarily the most damaging of AD carries, but definitely strong in regards to slowing and engage utility. Classic. Classic League of Legends champion here. Bans this time by. Gonna get rid of the Swain, so... Maybe not necessarily in regards to the strength of the Swain, but maybe enough to kind of get him uncomfortable. We'll have to see him momentarily there. Sniff Ninja really had himself a bad time. And this could be a spiteful counter ban here if they were able to take away Scout's Silas. Definitely effective in the last game. Sure enough, that is going to end up being the case. One more ban now on the side of St. Clair. try to make a prediction, but at this point it's just, like, I haven't seen enough of this SBU squad to really warrant it. They did kind of hover Twisted Fate in the last game, and you know what? They're going to take another shot at the mid laner. Unfortunately, there for Sniff Ninja, another one of his champions possibly gone here. Would not be surprised to see the Mordekaiser get taken down. I mean, we did see Jorge have himself a very solid game on it. Got ahead early and just straight up dominated that top lane doubling the CS, if not more, of his opponent, so. Gonna force Jorge Masvidal to go to get another character. And Scion would definitely fit the role that he's trying to play here. Big old tanky berserker. Ready to rock the top lane there. Of course, right now, Stony Brook don't have their top lane revealed, per se, unless it does end up being Lee Sin, but... Still not a confirm as of this moment. Of course, now Stony Brook, they have to show their hand here. They gotta pick their last two champions. When in doubt, Shen Top, I suppose. Always never a bad pick, it feels like, up in the top lane. Tanky yet utility kind of frontline warrior there for the side of Stony Brook Esports. But now, what do they pick as either their mid laner or their jungle? Now, it's going to be the Nautilus, so it's probably going to end up being... Lulu mid? 
Oh, we'll have to figure out together here. Then all this gets picked on in here, and Rel definitely would be a strong pick here for the Saints as well. Send that Karma up to maybe the mid lane or something like that instead. That might very well be the case here. A very safe but yet pokey mage here for the side of St. Clair. We're gonna get to see exactly where SBU is planning on putting everything in just a moment as well. So I won't lie, that draft kind of confused me a little bit there for the side of Stony Brook, but it could just be my pageant experience here coming out and biting me in the rear, but we'll have to see momentarily. That being said, hope it works here for the side of Stony Brook. It would be interesting to see a very, very quick 2-0 here today, but the Saints getting a very dominating win. But you know, if you've been around here long enough, as much as I love seeing our Saints win and do well, but I love even more is seeing close matchups. So I want to see somebody give the Saints a run for their money. And of course, we still have a whole weekend's worth of matchups here for the Saints if they keep this up. So definitely not going to be the last League of Legends match we see here this week. If we take a look, we do actually have, not only do we have uh, champions going in different positions, we actually, unless they lined up in the wrong order here, might have some roll swaps coming in. Yeah, they would have had to have lined up in the wrong order, I would assume, here. Because Yanni, I don't think he plays mid. But we'll go with it in just a second here. It does look like um, Stony Brook kind of lined up in the wrong order. So, going to do a little bit of fixer upper once we get into the game and whatnot. But... Now we can actually take a look at least at the champions at play, unless this does end up being a position swap. That would be very, very intrigued considering like half of the roster has switched their positions if that's the case. Yeah, Saints, of course, no real surprise there. As soon as the rail was locked in, we knew that Karmar was going mid. It is going to be EDG Scout. Going to be picking up that one. Jorge Masvidal, of course, going to be on the Scion. E-Hug gets his Kindred again. We'll get to see if it pops off similarly to game number one. Arlo going to be playing a little bit more of a supportive AD carry this time by, but of course did very well in game one as well, alongside Fresh's Rel. So, it be a fun one up here. We'll get to see if this Stony Brook squad can... Uh, Make the comeback here, otherwise, like I was saying, we're going to possibly have ourselves a bit of a quick one here tonight. With Clammy Boy up in the top lane up against Scion, I feel like it's going to be a wet noodle fight for the most part. Going to have to get a jungler's assist in order to find any sort of elimination. Whisperance on the Lee Sin. Going to be, of course, the first time we've gotten to see the Lee Sin there. Sniff Ninja picking up the Lulu. Now, considering how much of a, uh, a rough start, so to speak... Sniff Ninja had in game number one on the uh, Swain. I do like the idea of just picking the Lulu outright. It doesn't give away your draft position necessarily. And then Lulu is just so safe as a champion overall with just long range farming ability. If you feel like you're going to get poked out on lane, you have shields, you have a get off me tool with that polymorph. And of course, once you hit six, you do get a bunch of health and shields as well. Well, or things just health actually, but still, you have plenty of ways to keep yourself alive there. So if you're not necessarily too confident up against Scout, I don't mind the pickup here. Granted, you're going to be going up against Scout's Karma, which is just going to be constantly just belting out poke damage. So, I mean, time your shields right, and you'll be able to negate the majority of it. But I feel like Lulu will eventually just run out of mana. Nothing said though. Same thing with the Karma, but still, we'll have to see how hard. Um, Scout decides to build to this Karma off the start. See how aggressive it does end up being here. Meanwhile, bot lane matchup here this time by. So, as far as Nautilus, you got the safety in the beef of Nautilus, but also the safety in the poke from Virus here. So, a very similar situation. If you're not necessarily 100% confident, picking something that can let you farm from range, always a, f a fantastic strategy. But they're going to have to be very careful because if they do get themselves out of position, this Asherel bot lane will absolutely punish any misdoings. So, too far 
may not even necessarily need E-Hug to come on down there on that Kindred, but it would definitely be the uh, the deal sealer if they catch him out of position with E-Hug around the corner. So definitely a few, few things to keep an eye on. And then Whisperance, of course, was one of the few players on the side of uh, Stony Brook last time by that was relatively well off off the initial brawls. Had himself about... I think it was four eliminations, two deaths, and four assists. So it was off to a pretty decent start. But unfortunately, just could not find the picks he was looking for. The Saints in game number one, they kind of death balled a little bit as four for the most part. They left Barlow down bot lane to do his own thing and just farm up. Just going on one-on-one -on -one up against Diani. And then everybody else from the Saints was just death balling. Just getting towers, getting picks, to the point where that Diana in game number one just was basically ineffective. And we see this time, like Stony Brook, they could have picked it blue side, pick one, but they're just often, you know what, it didn't work last time. It's probably a completely different combination. We don't necessarily have a wombo combo. And now that I really think about it, I feel like their damage is going to be kind of lacking the more this goes on. They're going to be relying heavily on Hyenny's Varus for damage. Because Lee Sin is going to fall off. Lulu, okay, pokes early, but you're going to be more supportive than anything. And then Shen and Nautilus doing damage. That doesn't necessarily ring true to me. So Saints might just be able to straight up outlast some of these fights if it's going the way that I'm thinking. But of course, we'll have to see once we actually get to the rift itself. I don't want to make too many quick predictions. But without further ado enough of my blabber why don't we see how this happens in real time let's get into the action game number two between stony brook esports and sinclair college on its way welcome to summoner's rift we might have ourselves an engagement here to start things off here we see two death balls saints basically hanging around the mid lane Meanwhile, we do see... Oh, they're both actually going to engage on each other. That stun from Clammy Boy did not hit anything. The taunt just goes right into the face of Jorge, and he just meets him with an axe. Is anybody actually going to go down here? Clammy Boy, first blood, and who else but E-Hug? Going to find the first blood. Flash from Scout. That slowed everybody! Scout going to find himself a kill here onto Yanni as well, and an absolute catastrophe here for Stony Brook to start off this game. And both teams wanted to invade, and they just straight up run into each other. Absolutely unfortunate there for Stony Brook. And I like the idea there from Clammy Boy. He just went completely fearless, flash taunt, and went straight into the face of Jorge, charging an axe. So that was definitely a problem. And Danosaur here is in a bad position as well. Going to be taking a ton of damage. However, this could turn into a three on two. In just a second, Fresh might be in for a world of hurt here. And that is going to be a counter kill. Yanni's going to pick one up nice and quick as well. So solid job there from the side of Stony Brook to at least answer back. And answer back there on that bot lane. Because, of course, Yanni did end up going down early in that one. I just realized I've got to quickly fix up this uh, this order here. There we go. That's better. Okay. Proceed. Scout and Sniff Ninja. Just back and forth here. But at least now, of course, Sniff Ninja does have that. Oh, doesn't have the shield yet. Being able to. Uh, or kind of got level 2 a little bit slower compared to Scout. In fact, still doesn't have that level 2. Still working on it. And Scout being able to really abuse that. Finally, Sniff Ninja is going to have that level 2. Because get either that Get Off Me tool or that, uh, that shield. We see Scout does get jumped on. Whisperance going to find the elimination on the Scout. So nicely done there from Stony, uh, Stony Brook to be able to answer back both of those kills. Clammy Boy actually winning this duel so far here up in the top lane as well. Making that Shen work. So again, we have ourselves another brawly start to this matchup. Four kills in two minutes. We're looking for a tower dive. Whisperance getting maybe a little bit over eager. Yanni down to 10% of his health. And they're definitely getting feisty here. And just honestly, solid job there from uh, Dinosaur and, uh, and Yanni to be able to really abuse that level 2 lead that they did initially have. Now we see Clammy Boy and Jorge going right back up against it. Clammy going to get the worst for wear as of this moment, but 
Still a relatively even lane here, especially with that extra little shield that we see Clammy Boy using. But here's E-Hug. He's got one kill already. Can he add some more? Fresh is going to find himself one here. Barlow getting low, but not enough to take down. Hangs on tight, and it's going to be the second kill now going over to E-Hug. Picking up right where he left off in game number one. Might be a case of deja vu as of this moment anyway, with the way this game is going. The initial brawl in game number one, of course, like I referenced before, it was relatively even. It was like 2-2, two, 4-4. Two, four and four. And as of right now, it's kind of on pace to do the same thing. However, eventually Saints just absolutely took off. And the fact that E-Hug is already kind of fed here is a little bit scary if I'm here for the sign of Stony Brook. You see the kick now into the mid lane. Scout gonna sidestep the Sonic Wave there from Whisperance and now just right back up to the top lane. Jorge is actually getting kinda low here. Gonna answer with an axe. Does have a little bit of extra shield now and right when I think that Jorge is down in that fight. Brings it right back. There we go. Gets the caddy. He's good. Okay, good taunt, actually. Clammy boy. Jorge is going to go down. Can the zombified version of Scion make this work? However, to at least trade it one for one, it will. So, Clammy boy, solid job getting the kill, but at least there for Jorge in the side of the St. Clair Saints. Able to just answer it back in that zombified mode and get a couple extra CS for his troubles, too. So, Jorge, not going to be upset at that in the slightest. But one thing that definitely does interest me in regards to the picks and bans here, we saw um, Stony Brook. They banned out the Diana, but I'm very shocked that they just didn't ban out the Kindred, to be completely honest with you. With the Kindred popping off the way that it did, at least like from my non-coaching point of view, like to me that's obvious. It's like, okay, he went like 13 kills or something like that in game number one. Maybe we should force him to try something else. It doesn't do that at all, but hang on a second. We do have another engage here down in the bot lane. Barbo does get jumped on. Fresh trying to slow things down, but that's a good gank right there from Stonybrook. And that's going to get the kill onto Yanni. That's going to be his second elimination here of this game. So after a rough initial start, answers back with two and gets himself right back into it. Barlo has himself four assists, so relatively even, especially... Actually, no, never mind. Stonybrook might actually be ahead there in that bot lane. Considering you look at the CS numbers here, it is absolutely brutal in the favor of Stonybrook. And they're going to go back down to bot lane once again. E-Hug is down here, though. And a nice flash there as Clammy Boy came in there with that stand united. A nice hook onto Fresh. Going to force a flash. Yanni finds himself his third elimination. And there you go, Yanni. And there you go, Stonybrook. They are fighting back. And if there's anybody they want these kills on, it would definitely be Yanni. He's the main damage source, I think, of this entire team. And honestly, best case scenario for them. With that, of course, yeah, we're taking a look at here at some of the gold as the top laners just battle it out with their uh, with this wet noodle fight, but. If you look at the gold in the brackets, that's a total gold and whatnot that the team's current or the player currently has. Over 3,000 now here for Yanni. Just spent it all as well. Meanwhile, 2,000 there over for Barlow. So just that immense amount of advantage in terms of items purchased means that Yanni is just going to be hitting that much more uh, heavier. Like an absolute truck. So you see Jorge getting jumped on by Clammy once again. And Clammy is actually really coming through here with his top lane. Jorge is getting eager. He's trying to wait for Etha. And he might actually be able to pull this off here. Clammy might have bitten off a little bit more than he could chew. He's going to try and turn this. And he actually did a very good job to be able to at least get the one. But he's waited long enough here for a little backup. Whisperance is extremely low. Sniff Ninja as well. E Hug is going to go down. The Saints getting maybe a little bit cocky up there in that top lane. Going to give Stony Brook the even game now. 13.2 apiece. And to be honest, the gold, like I was saying before, it's in the right places here for Stony Brook squad. Granted, Saints also in a pretty decent position, getting E-Hug majority of the kills here in this one so far. But everybody else is a little bit worse for wear. Jorge is not as dominant this time by here on that Cyan, so the Mordekaiser ban might have been a good idea.
West Burns having yet another good game has not gone down yet so far. Two eliminations, three assists for him so far. And then this is exactly what uh, Sniff Ninja really needed here. Only two assists, not getting taken down, keeping relatively close in regards to CS. So if he was feeling bad in regards to how game one went, they're at least keeping close here and not just sending kills over and over. So this is exactly what uh, Sniff Ninja needed to do. The Lulu pick, honestly, big props there for uh, Stony Brook. A solid adjustment in their strategy. And of course, can't go without prop giving props there to Annie and Danasaur as well. As we see, Infernal Dragon getting picked up here. Saints are not going to opt to challenge that one. That's just going to get picked up nice and clean. As I do believe, yeah, okay, so instead of going for Dragon, E-Hug did end up going towards the Rift Herald. Probably going to drop it here. Yeah, sure, I'm going to drop it here onto this top lane turret. Try and get as much damage as possible onto it. Get a bunch of these tower plates for some additional gold. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Scout gets caught out and Sniff Ninja finds himself an elimination. Just catching the Karma off guard, so... Nicely done, and the Saints might have overstayed their welcome. Here comes Danosaur on the roam alongside Sniff Ninja and Whisperings. Gleason already used its ultimate at this moment. Does not matter. It's just going to straight up dive on in, take care of E-Hug, making his reign much less dominant. And the zombified version of Jorge is not going to pick up the kill. So, okay. Stony Brook really coming in clutch here to put up a fight for game number two. Good little dodge there from Clammy as well. Had that boosted Karma Q made contact, I feel like that might have actually taken him down. Maybe not, however, though. Scout doing solid so far, but not necessarily so far ahead that those Qs are doing major, major damage. Oh, we see actually Yanny down the bot lane has Danasaur right there with them. And that's the kind of combo you want to see before the AD carry of the Saints even get back down into their lane. Fresh gets popped. However, gonna be answered pretty quickly here. We do see Barlow taking some shots. We have two engagements across map here. Nice little snipe there from Barlow to get one. And honestly, nice little snipe there from Scout as well. That being said though, Jorge is not done yet. Wants to take a piece out of Sniff Ninja, but a good ult's coming out from Sniff. Keep himself alive. Gonna be outranged. No, not gonna be outranged at all, but one shield is exactly what Sniff needed there at that last second just to keep himself alive here. Still, no deaths here in this game, but this tower is not going to be long for this world at this worry. As we see Ethan jump on in, pop the ultimates, but Yanni can use this as well. And they're just gonna burst him down as soon as it's done. Beautifully done there from the Saints to try and claw some eliminations back. To be fair, they found themselves the gold lead, even though they aren't necessarily entering the lead for kills. But they're finding the gold elsewhere, and it's really keeping them in this game, keeping them ahead here in this game. Even though it feels like the momentum should be on the side of uh, Tony Brook. The Saints still in an overall solid position. Hugging. It's going to be fresh jumping on in as well. Danasaur is going to probably go down very quickly, but it's not going to be at the cost of nothing. It does take down E Hug. And we're going to see Rel flash over. Fresh hanging on tight, looking for the, the Lee Sin Q snipe. And Whisperance is not going to be able to make contact with it. Fresh had the shield on him as well. So even if the Q didn't make contact, probably would not have finished off the job. So good on the Saints to back away from that situation. We do see the elves coming in. Jorge charging in hot. Going to have to back on up here as that is going to be Clammy Boy. He's not staying united. Hopping right on in. And that's going to be the Ash Arrow from downtown from his own tower. Barlow with a massive disengage with that arrow. And they might be able to turn this into a kill. They're going to try and push on the Clammy Boy. But Jorge is going to get sacrificed for this. Can he make something work in zombie mode? I don't think he's going to be able to actually. And out of this as well. Scout gets caught out as well. So right now, perfect fight here for... Stony Brook, he hugs gonna find one, but it's just a matter if they can kill Yanni. If they kill Yanni, they get this fight. 
Fresh getting poked out, wants to turn this. Barlow does finally show up from the bot lane. This is exactly where they need to be. E Hugs still not going going in. Well, he's hitting, charging on through. Nice little combo going to finish off E Hug. And this is just an absolute back and forth here. Good volley, but Barlow is going to flash, but it does not matter. Whisperance is still right there. One more shot will seal the deal here on Barlow's fate. And the Q snipe coming out here from Whisperance. Sixth elimination here in this game with five assists on top of that. And this game is now within or almost within 1K. Well, I tell you what, after seeing game number one, I would not have expected game number two to be this close, and Stony Brook coming in absolutely clutch as of this moment. May not necessarily be in the lead, but 1k difference is not that bad in the slightest here. Objective-wise, they haven't been doing too bad either. We see the Infernal Drake, one already on the board there for them, and they're looking to set up for number two here. It's going to be the Wind, or no, the Water Drake, rather. Fresh is here, but he's alone versus four. Gonna have to use the transformation to get himself out of dodge. Jorge jumps on in, but it's too little, too late. And I don't care how tanky you are, you jump in versus five, you're probably dead. Now, where is Yanni as all this? Still hanging out in the back. He's kind of stuck in the pit. This gives the Saints the perfect opportunity to jump on in and take him down. Not going to be without cost, however, so one more is going to fall. Scout does get killed, but... Overall plus there for the Saints, it, but it could turn into a plus for Stony Brook. They can just stall this game out a little bit more. Yes, Saints now at 2.5k ahead in this game. But the two dragons in the pocket, Stony Brook is not something that should be ignored. The Whisperance jumping on in, beautifully done. Absolutely destroying Barlow, taking him down. And that's going to be elimination number nine now for Whisperance. Again, like we've seen him have a fantastic start in game number one, but could not quite send it through. As of right now here in game number two, he knows he needs to make these plays early with Lee Sin, and he's been absolutely doing that. Going all over the place, maybe having a little bit, like, optimally, maybe could have a couple less kills and just share them over to some of the teammates. That being said, though, it's what happens when you have executes as a part of your kit, so fair enough there. Big props, everybody, especially to those who have been trying to boost the stream with your channel points, of course, and get this matchup shown to as many eyes as possible. Big thank you to everybody in the chat. Hope you're enjoying your evening here with us for this Dream Hack Beyond matchup. The Rift Herald does get popped on pretty much instantly as soon as it was gone. I don't think Whisperance think that he was going to survive that one. Arrow snipe right onto Whisperance. The slow is here. Arlo leading the charge, however, alongside Shelly. Shelly's actually going towards the Saints turret, so that's going to be doing some damage there. Fresh in the swing of things. A good ult coming out here from E-Hug, keeping Fresh alive. And now, of course, Fresh has that shield. Barlow, basically untouched here, has just been absolutely machine gun arrows this entire fight. Dance are eventually going to go down. We're going to have ourselves a little bit of a support brawl here. E-Hug going to then... <laughs> come in here and interfere with that 1v1 and secure the kill as well. 20 kills a piece here. Saints in the lead by about 3, almost 4k. But again, objectively, Stony Point. Stony. Why do I keep saying Stony Point? Stony Brook have themselves an out here because of the dragons. I will say in the Saints, this is something I kind of actually gave the Saints hell for a little bit during the last semester's action, where it felt like most of the time they would center around one person to be the carry, so one person would be a threat. And then if that threat goes down, the, the fight is basically done. But right now, Saints, they have at least two between Ehug and it's Barlow. Both of them could definitely carry a fight on damage if they have themselves the proper positioning. It's good that it's not just a one a one and done kind of deal here for this team composition. Next dragon, about a minute 30 away here. You see, like wisely done here from Stony Brook actually. Gonna clear out all the vision. They know this is what they need to do if they want any chance of winning this game. Try to find a 
pick or something. They have Yanny here, but again, Yanny is the this Cypher Stony Brook is what I'm talking about. But at least Whisper is so fed, it could do some decent damage. We're going to see an ultimate come on down. Where is Sniff? Sniff is going to get absolutely popped here by Barlow. We're going to see Jorge coming in uh, hot there towards that mid turret, but they're not going to be able to take it down just yet. Wave of minions is here. Not going to take it down. Fresh just going to dive on in. Might sacrifice himself, maybe not. Gonna hang on tight for just a second. Barlow right on there alongside E Hug. Finds one. Can he find a second one? That one's gonna go over to Scout. This battle is not done though. Whisperings has arrived. Just absolutely roundhouse kicks E Hug in the face and takes him down, but it's not going to go unanswered. Beautifully done from Scout. Get himself two eliminations here in this battle. Tower is going to go down as well, and they can just keep poking here. There's nothing Yanny can do. You can tell he's being so cautious in that fight with how aggressive the Saints wanted to just go right in his face. Sure, he did some damage. He got himself an ultimate off. I think that maybe slowed down some of the members of the Saints, but it was not enough. And now we're starting to see this gold lead here for the Saints just keep on rising more and more. 40k currently in the bank for them compared to 34 on the side of Stony Brook. The dragon now spawns Stony Brook. They have to get to respawn and they have to move quickly if they want to try and stop the Saints from getting this. That being said, though, if the Saints get themselves into a proper 5v5 position, I don't see how they lose the team fight unless some really poor pick ends up happening against their favor. Clammy Boy and the rest of the Stony Brook squad doing what they need to do in regards to the boarding. And we're going to see Fresh get out here too. And a beautiful hook actually there from Danosaur. It's going to force Fresh to get stuck up here. It's going to force Jorge to make his way up as well. But Fresh is going to get killed before this fight even happens. What is the Junus on the dragon? There is the dive through, but it is going to be taken away by E-Hug. He is going to go down rather quickly, however. Jorge, hot pursuit, but I think that is going to be zombified mode. Does end up going down. So yes, the Saints get a dragon, but it was answered with three eliminations on the side of Stony Brook. So... A little bit unfortunate because that Dragon Soul is now going to be even more stalled away. But the fight didn't go as poorly as it could have, so they can try to answer with some of these turrets. And maybe get themselves a little bit of extra gold. Scout is going to be here. He can poke from afar, but as we can see, Yanni is just absolutely killing it right now with damage. Lots of shots constantly going through. We see Famine Soft or sniff ninja right there as well that tower is not long for this world and that's one way that's the first tower that um that stony brook have gotten here in this game so in honest all honesty they can just group up and try to kill off a couple more of these towers and that will make up a massive difference with how much this gold difference is right here we're gonna see jorge charge on in here as fresh does get jumped upon some decent damage going to be done to Whisper and sending him to the back. Danosaur is not going to be long for this world. It's taken down by Barlow and friends. And now that is going to be a Baron. Does Stony Brook want to try and force a 4v5? I don't think so. This Baron is getting melted as well. They're going to have to fight at the inhibitor turrets. Beautiful pick there for the Saints to really just kind of shut down any momentum that Stony Brook may have been building. The back up, get themselves some items. All barrened up and good to go now. As long as the Saints look to maybe push towards one of these inhibitor turrets, they do have a couple hurts available up in the top and bottom if they want to try and group up for that as well. They have ultimates online. Whisper's looking for a pick, but is going to run into two there. Scout was escorted by Fresh, so relatively safe nonetheless. Now here come the barrened up minions, and they're looking towards mid, at least as of this moment, this with the split push of Jorge. An unfortunate whiff here coming out from the side of Stony Brook as well. The ultimates come out, but they don't make contact. Now it does, actually. Yanny gets massive damage on the scout, and it forces the ultimate, actually, from E-Hug as well. So that is not going to be here, and this is going to be their time to engage. Janusor gets engaged on, has the health boost from the side of Swift Ninja as well. This battle a little bit unfortunate here for 
Brooks. Right, the Stony Brook, never mind, they're kind of bringing this one back, but the tank line is falling. They're going to try and make it happen. Sniffinja is still here, just has to get past Jorge. Yanni is poking him away, but to be honest, that fight went so even that the Saints can't actually make a dent in the structures of the side of Stony Brook. So, in all honesty, this Baron buff is basically done as long as the side of Stony Brook don't get too aggressive. Just get those minions, don't worry about Scout, don't worry about Jorge, just farm it up. And they'll get themselves back into this game in no time, especially with, like I was saying before, still plenty of towers here left in the field for them to take. Just regroup, there's no objectives for maybe about another minute, so they're gonna have to go towards a dragon shortly, but still some time for them to do so. See Yanni on his way over there alongside Danosaurus, so we'll start setting that up momentarily. That's kind of funny. I was just watching Breaking Bad. Anyway, moving on forward here with the matchup at hand. Just 50 seconds left before this next Mountain Drake does get onto the field. And honestly, that last team fight there from the side of Stony Brook, they were able to bait out so much from the Saints or so much value from the Saints before that team fight even had the opportunity to really get moving. Being able to get rid of E-Hug's ultimate being able to save somebody as the team fight actually goes down. Absolutely huge. Forced to blow it early, so that was completely off the table, which means any picks that the Stony Brook squad managed to pick up would be completely free from the go, basically completely unanswered. So, Dragon gonna be up in just a quick moment here, five seconds beforehand. Dinosaur flashes on over, was looking for something, but not quite going to find the hook that he may have been looking for, but it's actually going to get caught out here. Going to sacrifice themselves for the engage, but keeps themselves alive. Unfortunately, their clammy boy in the middle of all of the Saints is going to end up going down. A couple low health bars here. Yanni is one of them. He's all the damage here on this Stony Brook side, and it is going to go down. Whispered's going to try and enter. He is fed, but not that fed. You can't go versus five. In all honesty, this should be the game here for the Saints to take this in 2-0 fashion. And to be honest, though, props to Stony Brook. They definitely did a much better fight compared to game number one. But with the team completely wiped and the inhibitors going down and the minions here to help on out, these towers are going down and that Nexus is going to be sure to follow. Looks like your St. Clair Saints are going to start off this dream hack beyond Collegiate Invitational with a 2-0 victory on the right side of the scoreboard this time by very dominating fashion. That being said, of course, GG's to go across the board to everybody. This is exactly the kind of start that we wanted to see the St. Clair College roster get started off with here. Being able to take a 2-0 is an absolutely fantastic start to this tournament. But there's still, of course, plenty more action to come within the next couple of days here in this DreamHack Beyond event. In fact, that's why you quickly take a look at our schedule. We'll get to exactly see what we're taking a look at. It might be on our channel. It may not. We'll have to see momentarily as the day goes on. But as of right now, currently scheduled, we do have Thursday at 6 o'clock, the next matchup in our DreamHack Beyond Adventures, but then on Thursday, at, or Thursday later on in the same day, I mean, if it's another game like this where it was basically a speed run, I think we might be able to squeak in a Rocket League match too for some CCA Summer Series action. Actually, never mind. That is going to be on the CCA's channel themselves. So two matchups happening probably at the same time. Lots of collegiate esports action here for our St. Clair Saints. Then on Friday, 8 o'clock, we have one OCRS matchup here on the Saints channel, but we also have another one on the OCRS's channel at 8.45. Then on Saturday, depending on how things go in the group stage here for the Dream Hack Beyond event, we'll be here starting again at 3 o'clock for maybe one more matchup before the actual finals. But we'll have to see how things are lining up nonetheless before we get there. So if you have not done so already, make sure you follow us here on the Saints Gaming CA Twitch channel. To make sure you're caught up with all the updates and on our Twitter as well. Get all the updates for the scheduling and then make sure you catch all the matches live as they are happening. For any of the matches that are happening on other channels, we'll have it hosted here. So if you do click on our channel, it'll send you to the right place anyway. So make sure that you follow us and catch all the matches live. But... 
Awesome start here again here. Just can't stress it enough. Stony Brook, first off, massive improvement compared to game number one. I liked that they were able to like, kind of understand what they were needing to do, where, where their weaknesses were showing, they then picked safe. And to be fair, they kept it close, but unfortunately, just the overall economic game eventually caught up to them. They were even killing it in regards to eliminations off the start. But unfortunately, just everything else about the game, the Saints were slowly chipping away at that lead and were able to get a gold lead, even though they didn't have the elim elimination lead. Again, just going through the feed one more time here with Whisperings. A massive game there for him as well. 10 eliminations, 5 deaths, 10 assists. It was absolutely crazy, but just goes to show how the playmaking potential of Lee Sin eventually kind of slows down once we get into those team fight phases. Unfortunately, wasn't able to quite capitalize. Sniff Ninja, much better laning phase, was basically deathless throughout the majority of that game. Even getting themselves uh, 12 assists and 4 eliminations, but eventually, it's too little too late there, unfortunately. Yanni off to what looks like an awful start, but then completely flipped it around, was winning that lane, but you're only so, you're so squishy as an AD carry, and you get out of position once, and it's just absolutely curtains for you. Clammy Boy, a much better game up in the top lane there. Banning away the Mordekaiser there from Jorge was definitely a solid choice on the side of Stony Brook. And they are able to keep themselves nice and close. And Danasaur, a much better game there on the Nautilus compared to the set. But again, if there's anything we can kind of take away here from that last series, is e Hug is an absolute monster on Kindred. 13 eliminations. 15 assists was an absolute bloodbath, and he was basically a part of everything. Or hey, Masvidal, as much as the Scion was cool, unfortunately, it was a little bit slower pace there. Did manage to get a ton of assists, though, was a bunch of the... Or doing a bunch of the engaging, rather. And when, I mean, you're the tank, so I guess if you are the one going down... Now, in theory, if you're going down and the rest of your teammates aren't, I guess you're kind of doing your job. Scoot, or Scoot Scout... Um, solid game there on the Karma as well. Six eliminations, 15 assists, and four deaths. And Barlow doing a fantastic job on that Ash as well. 11 eliminations with 17 assists, four deaths. And kept it be a little bit closer compared to what laning phase was looking like. Because it looked like he was getting kind of dominated initially off of CS numbers to start off with. But a much better end game there. And then Fresh, of course... Not on the uh, Lulu this time by, but picked up the Rel, and you basically wouldn't have known the difference. There's a couple hiccups during the early game, but it still was absolutely all over the place. 23 assists there for him today, with only the one elimination and six deaths. Solid job across the board there for the Saints. But with that being said, a couple thank yous are now in order. Thank you to everybody for tuning in to the matchup tonight. It was awesome getting the cast some League of Legends action here for you all, and thank you for supporting the squad. Whether they are your family members, friends, classmates, whatever they may happen to be, thank you for supporting their esports endeavors. Of course, also thank you to the sponsors that make this all possible, that being Tim Hortons and Subway, St. Clair College itself, the Zeckelman School of Business and Information Technology, St. Clair SRC, and the St. Clair College Alumni Association. And with that, we shall be closing out here in just a moment. Thank you again for everybody for tuning in. My name's Dan Banner, also known as Mr. Danner, as your host and producer here for tonight here on the St. Clair Saints Varsity Esports channel. I'll see you tomorrow for some more League of Legends action and possibly some Rocket League as well. I'll see you then.